Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and uh, welcome to another comic book haul video. And uh, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a comic book haul that I've been sort of buying from the same local seller for the last uh, two months, two and a half months or so. And there isn't that many comic books here. There's uh, uh, 26 books. Um, that I ended up getting over like a two month period, right? And I've printed off a whole bunch of, bunch of info regarding uh, the comics. I did a little research on them. Uh, some of the stuff I knew before and some of the stuff I was uh, surprised to find out. I was like, wow, I didn't know that stuff. There's so much history in comic books, which is absolutely, uh, absolutely brilliant. Okay, uh, with that little intro aside, uh, let's take a look at this uh, comic book haul. I've been dying uh, to show you guys some of these books that I've uh, bought like last month, but then the seller started putting some other some additional books up and I went fishing, right? I'm sort of low budget, sort of uh, bottom feeding right now, but ended up getting uh, uh, some fantastic deals. Ended up paying fair price for a couple of books that I really wanted and uh, got one book here that um, I'm going to show you guys and we're going to look look at it in detail, most likely uh, the same style that we do the comic book readings on, right? Uh, and I'll show you this thing as well. This thing, my maximum price for it was a lot higher than what we ended up paying. So I was really happy to get it and uh, I haven't gone through it yet. I figured we'd go through it together. Okay, so let me pull these guys out. And these things, they're not in boxes. I just go to, the, go to the store and pick them up, right? So he puts them in paper bags. Okay. So let me show you these guys. And the comic book haul basically goes from uh, Golden Age to... There should be Golden Age here. I got the dates here anyway. Um, well, they're mostly Silver Age, actually. I don't know if there's anything uh, specifically Golden Age. There might be. Uh, but most of the stuff is either gold or bronze age okay so this is one of them right and he puts this on this one uh together this this one cost me this much i sort of moved the bags around a little bit so there was a couple of additional comics in here so he put a price tag of ebay uh, whatever was in here cost me um uh, 23.75 but this might have been another bag that i had from a previous haul that i transfer the comics over right because like the bags were sort of you know the comics were they're like this so they might have been a little bit squished so i grabbed another bag to put the stuff in right so he usually puts the price of what's in the in the bag what i've bought over a week or two week period in different bags and i go there after a month or two months or three months and pick up the stuff right so let me show you these guys okay first one on the list and this was cool I found this out uh, afterwards when I picked it up the guy actually told me that Sean Connery is makes a, is in this comic book the character Sean Connery as a comic book character okay and uh, this one is four color 1026 1026 and it's Darby O'Gill and the little people from Walt Disney right I mean see if I can get the glare out of there there you go right and this is uh, one of the Dell four color comic book uh, movie related movie and TV show related comic books that they were releasing okay and uh, this one uh, is from 1959 and it's Walt Disney movie uh, this the story is about a leprechaun and Sean Connery is in this because he was one of the people starring in this movie okay and uh, this is before Sean Connery was um, became bond started starring as james james bond and stuff right and i end this is graded at fine which is 6.0 which is a pretty good copy which is uh, more on the mid high grade right it's uh, not bad very nice copy and uh, this is uh, i ended up paying three dollars and 20 here let me put this thing here so i can read it and show you guys the cover okay let me make a little room for myself. So I ended up paying $3.25 for this Canadian, which ends up being, and this is, I guess, the main actress that was in the movie, and ended up, ended up being 
44 cents and there's a little leprechaun i guess it ended up being two dollars and 44 cents us okay and uh, alex toff uh, is the writer for this i believe anyway it should be alex toth okay and alex toth did a fair bit of work he did uh, he did stuff he's pretty well known in a certain genre of comic books um he was responsible for space ghost um the herculoids and birdman right and her, um space ghost and uh birdman have been reintroduced into the our social culture from the late 1990s I guess so he was producing this stuff in the 1960s 1950s and 60s but then his stuff started getting reintroduced re rehashed I believe I believe it was a cartoon network that has a cartoon series Space Ghost and Birdman as well right I don't know if he had he was involved in it or not okay and Alex Toth was introduced into the Hall of uh, Comic Book Hall of Fame um, I didn't know him I just like these, as you know, the comic book halls you might have seen. I like these uh, movie adaptations of four color uh, comics. And you've, you've seen a fair bit of these comics that I've bought over the years as comic book halls, right? So that was a good haul. And $3.25 Canadian, $2.44 US was a fantastic, it was a good deal. It was a good deal for uh, comic book graded a fine, right? Uh, the next one is on the same category, right? Is Walt Disney's Shaggy Dog, <laughs> right? And this was graded at the uh, fine minus 5.5, okay? And it again is from 1959, okay? And again, I paid uh, 325 Canadian for this, uh, which comes out to 244 US. And Dan Spiegel was the writer, for, uh, is the artist for this. And he's, he was pretty, he was pretty big actually um, I got little notes here basically Spiegel worked on uh, Space Family Robinson which was uh, debuted before the TV series so he did a lot of work for four color we and uh, in their movie and TV adaptations um, into comic books okay and uh, and again this is based on a, a television I've, I've never seen the series I've never seen the TV show but there's a lot of there's a lot of dog TV shows, right? The one I used to watch was The Littlest uh, Hobo. The Littlest Lobo, right? I said, Hobo, Lobo. The Littlest Lobo was a Canadian uh, dog. Uh, I watched Lassie and there was uh, Big Yella uh, when the kid takes a dog out back and shoots him. I forget what the, what the name of that movie was. There was Big Yella, I think, anyway. But I used to watch uh, a little bit of Lassie, but my main dog TV show was Littlest Hobo and it was amazing. It's a Canadian, uh, it was a Canadian uh, TV show. And really, it, it's such an endearing, endearing, fantastic uh, TV show. So I'm assuming this is on the same level, maybe. I don't think it'd be on the same level. The Littlest Hobo was absolutely amazing. Brilliant TV series, right? So this is super cute. Super cute. And Spiegel. Uh, is known for unknown soldier tomahawk jonah hex and teen titans right and one other note that i have here what did i write here regarding spiegel i wrote a whole bunch i don't i, I can't go through it when i dig into this stuff i mean basically what i told you about four colors here <laughs> this is shaggy dog right i'm going deep i just follow links and start reading stuff uh, i don't retain all the information but uh, i like reading it as i'm doing it right and I got here, uh, Spiegel and writer Donald F. Glott co-created the Dr. Specter. Oh, that's the reason I put it. Dr. Specter character in Mystery Comics Digest number no. 5 from 1972. And Dr. Specter, I'm not 100% sure if uh, he did make his uh, appearance in the Valiant comics originally that came up. Because Dr. Specter was some of the gold key characters. And Valiant comic bought some of the gold key characters and stuff like that. So I found that interesting. I didn't go down any deeper than that. Um, and he did create the Black Hole comic book uh, series as well. Spiegel did. So he's a pretty big name. Okay. He was a pretty big name. And Tom Hawk is, is huge. It's very collectible. And John Hicks, uh, we've collected uh, some of those comics as well, right? Let me show you this. 
this is unique I've never seen this one before there are things related to this um, as well okay now this is the comic for collectors guide to and it's not a guide it's a price list of a it's a magazine format okay so let me show you this this is Grand Book Center uh, 659 Grand Street Brooklyn New York right so this is a comic book seller when you fill out orders and uh, you mail in your order you buy comics from them right so this is better than a price guide because a price guide is exactly what it it says it is it's a guide right it's sort of a starting point where you can discuss with a seller how much you're willing to pay for a price or you can price things out and decide how much you're willing to pay for it. the guide sometimes is way overvalued sometimes is way undervalued right but this is specifically a catalog where you can order the comics for those specific prices okay and uh, so it's sort of a price list and from uh, the the person I picked this up from, he is a historian, comic book historian, and he teaches a course at a university, a college here, regarding comic books. And he said he did a lot of research for this, right? And he he found out that this is anywhere from 1966 to 1970, as far as when it was published, when it was released, okay? And it's got two extra pages in there with uh, mail-in ordering stuff right i put I put some of the info back here right so i won't forget right and we're gonna flip through this okay i'm pretty sure we're gonna flip through this because he had taken some pictures when he had we had the comic book listed on ebay he had taken some pictures and there's a list of some of the comics you could buy and there were like early issues of amazing spider-man for like a dollar 75 early issues of um, avengers for like a dollar right so I really want to flip through this and we'll get an idea of how much comics were selling for anywhere between 1966 to 1970 right so you can consider this if you've been buying comic books online or buying it on eBay or looking through historical prices you can consider this the actual selling price of comic books in that period which is fantastic right and my we ended up paying um 1150 for this canadian which comes out to 865 us right my maximum bid for this was a lot a lot higher okay i'm very happy to have gotten this for 1150 canadian almost uh you know 850 us nine dollars us should i tell you what my maximum price with this my maximum price for this was 66 dollars okay canadian so you had some other zines up that I tried to get my hands on, but they went for higher, right? This was sort of in the mid-range, sort of in the lower end. And this is the one that I bid the maximum on, right? Like triple what anything else I bid on, right? So very happy to have this. And we'll take a look at it, okay? We'll take a look at it. Let's see what else we got, what else we got. Here's another one. Right. There's a bunch of comics in there, so let's grab these. See which order I have these in. Oh, this one. I have the comics listed, so I figure we'll go in order here so we don't miss anything. And it's easier for me to find out uh, where. Here's the other one. Right. There we go. This is good. out now this comic book you can get on the cheap cheap okay this series and I ended up picking up issue number one and issue number five of Captain Savage and the leather neck Raiders okay here's issue number one let me show you the covers for this here's issue number one and this one we ended up paying let me check it out uh, we ended up paying 325 Canadian 244 US okay and I'll tell you who the creators of this comic are and you're gonna get blown away you can get this if you want to get some 
uh, comic books from the Silver Age on the cheap that have some major creators working on them, Captain Savage would be it. And this is Captain Savage number five. Okay. And Captain Savage number five, I ended up paying, let me flip the page, I ended up paying <laughs> this one i ended up getting for 25 cents canadian right 19 cents us bagged and boarded right and i'll read you who the creators for these these guys are we'll blow you away right and this is the number one right awesome awesome so captain savage check this out script script is by gary frederick okay pencils by dick Ayers and inks by Sid Shore, okay? Gary Frederick is the person that was writing Sergeant, Sergeant Fury and uh, Howling Commandos, okay? He co-created Ghost Rider and Son of Satan, okay? Uh, that's for number one, right? And Dick Ayers is huge, and if you recall with it, the comic book haul or not comic book haul I showed you some of the comics that I published under memory publications and we had Dick Ayers um, ink one of the covers for it was a great gateful cover one of the covers for Lander comic number two that I ended up printing right as mermaid publication so his and Dick Ayers was known as Jack Kirby's inker right he did a huge portion of Jack Kirby's inking the, um, when Jack Kirby did the pencils Dick Ayers would do the inking for Jack Kirby's pencils so Dick Ayers has worked on some of the most important key issues from Marvel Comics from the 1960s and 70s like a huge 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 right and he's he's been inducted into the uh, comic book hall of fame i'm pretty sure as well right i'm i'm pretty sure i <laughs> i made notes of it there's a whole page here this thing is almost the notes i took on captain savage and the leatherneck raiders right and both of these comics uh, let me let me tell you this as well number one is graded at fine so I write it down here. It came out in 1968. It's graded at fine, which is 6.0. Okay. And this one that I paid 25 cents for is graded at very good, which is 4.5. Right. As for number five, check this out. I mean, that's a beautiful cover. Right. Take a look. <laughs> They're hanging on to the string, gliding down shooting the bad guys right it's a sunny day today so we're getting lots of glare we've had the rainiest january in history i think in uh, on the west coast of canada and today is a sunny day which is fantastic mission destroy the invisible enemy what does number one say check this out this one's a wacko cover dare not miss this power pack premiere issue the last bonsai right and this is uh, for number five because I started uh, looking up uh, the, and I do have some Captain Savage as well we might have got some in previous haul but the people that have worked on this right Dick Ayers uh, we talked about Arnold Drake wrote the script for um, Captain Savage number five. Okay, the pencils were Dick Ayers, the inks were Sid Shore, uh, the cover was Ayers and Shores. Shore, um, and Dick Ayers is is huge, right? He created the Western comic book Ghost Rider, and he did a lot of World War II, and it was known as Jack Kirby's Inker, basically. Uh, and we've talked about Dick Ayers a lot in the past. And then we got Arnold Drake. Um, he was basically uh, one of the creators, co-creators of Dead Man and Doom Patrol, right? And I didn't know this. Um, and uh, and some of the characters in Guardians of the Galaxy, right? So Arnold Drake, which was the writer, right? Co-created Dead Man, Doom Patrol, and Guardians of the Galaxy, which is super cool, 
right? Sidney Shore, check this out, was an American comic book artist known for his work on Captain America, including issue number 100, right? And he did the um, inks for this, right? Huge, huge. And he actually worked on Captain America, the original Captain America series. And he, um, what do you call it? Uh, he, let me read you this sentence. Shores initially worked as an inker, embellishing some of the earlier, earliest pencil work of industry legend Jack Kirby, right? Including the covers of Simon and Kirby created Captain America comics number five, number seven, and number nine from 1941, right? And I picked up this comic for a quarter Canadian, right? Not that, collecting some of the work of some of the greats in comic books, right? And this thing I was, uh, I was interested on. I found out, I didn't know. Artie Smick, okay, he did the letters for this. And Artie Smick, I didn't know about. Um, because a lot of the time, unfortunately, the letters in comic books, they don't get enough credit. Lettering in a comic book is absolutely amazing. If you want to read a comics, comic book series that the lettering will blow you away. Actually, two of them. I'll give you two of them, which are absolutely amazing. One of them is Watchmen, which is brilliant. Okay, Alan Moore's Watchmen. And the lettering in that is absolutely phenomenal. And also, take a look at, actually, I'll give you three. One of them is Alan Moore's Watchmen. Another one is Alan Moore's Swamp Thing, right? You want to see amazing lettering done right. You read, Al actually everything done right. Read Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. And the other one, in terms of lettering, which was, you know, groundbreaker, was uh, Sandman comic books from Vertigo Comics. Again, DC Comics putting it out, right? The lettering in Sandman is absolutely phenomenal, right? And, you know, so I've been sort of, paying more attention to the letters and comic books. And this one was Arthur Artie uh, Smeek, Smike. I'm crappy with pronouncing names. So let me show you the name so you get the correct spelling, right? Okay. And I'm gonna read you this. And I pulled this just from Wiki, right? Just one level and I, Follow it up a little bit more and I wanted some history pages and stuff like this, but I didn't copy those things down for us to read it. But Smith, uh, Smick's work included, check this out, check this out, such landmarks as Fantastic Four number one, right, from 1961, and Spider Man's debut in Amazing Fantasy number 15 the first appearance of spider-man right so he did the lettering for fantastic four number one amazing amazing fantasy number 15. what 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 that's absolutely fantastic right fantastic and the price is the icing on the cake on this my 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 price for this was higher getting it for a quarter was phenomenal right fantastic now check this out since we talked about Sergeant Fury and the Howling Commandos, this one I paid a premium price for. I paid fair value for this, but it's fair value right now. This you can consider sort of a, on an investment front, right? And it is something that um, I was trying to get my hands on. And this is Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos annual, the king size annual, number one, from 1965 okay but this one is special because it's a Canadian variant and right now like 10 years ago you could buy Canadian variants on the same price that you could buy the US uh, issues of comics right but Canadian variants in the last 10 to 15 years have been going up in price mad especially the stuff from the golden age of comics especially some of the romance and horror com and war comics and stuff like this that i've been tracking i've gotten my hands on some canadian comics love uh romance comics from the golden age um, a couple of two or three or well, canadian variant war comics maybe more right 
but this one is Sergeant Fury on a Howling Commandos, the Canadian variant. And the Canadian variants, you can tell that the, they're the Canadian variants because the back of the front cover is blank and the back cover is blank, right? So this is fantastic. And there is, check this out here, let me bring in. Unfortunately, apologies about the glow, but it is what it is, right? Check that out. And again, some of the greatest creators in comic books have worked on this issue, right? And this is graded at very good fine. And it's from 1965. And I ended up paying $24.50 Canadian, which came out to $18.43 US. Okay. Let me read you who some of the people are that have worked on this comic. The script is by Stan Lee. Um, well, there's, there's a few stories here, but script by Stan Lee, pencils by Dick Ayers, inks by Frank Giocoya, uh, okay, Frankie Ray, right? There's also another story, which is a reprint. So that was the original story, okay? Uh, so the, there's one original story, new story, commissioned on Coral, okay? And that's Stan Lee, Dick Ayers, and Frank uh, Frankie Ray there's a reprint of uh, um, Sergeant Fury in Howling Commandos number four okay and from number five and that one is the script is by Stan Lee the pencils is by Jack Kirby and the inks is by George Rososo George Bell okay plus Jack Kirby reprints from Sergeant Fury and Howling Kamala's cover probably covered by Dick Harris as well All right and the cover is brilliant for this woohoo a brand new battle epic see the how howlers in action in Korea as Fury wins a battle commission battlefield commission complete in, in this issue Lord haha's -ha last laugh complete in this issue at the mercy of, of Baron Strucker. So this is on the same level as uh, more sought after definitely than uh, Captain Savage, Sergeant Fury and the Howling Commandos. Happy to have this Canadian edition and I made the note here, right? Canadian variant. So we won't uh, lose it in the pile. Check this out. This is another one that we got as, <laughs> check this out. This is another Canadian variant comic I ended up getting. And I paid a fair price for this as well. Okay, these, these two were basically the most expensive comics in this lot, right? This is Marvel Tales number two from 1965. And this is the Canadian variant. And I got a, the price I paid for this was, is a fair price, expensive for me, right? But it was an amazing deal when it comes to the price that it's going for, because this is the Canadian variant, right? I ended up paying $20.50 for this, which comes out to $15.42 US, okay? And this thing, the Marvel Tales, you can get these on the cheap, right? And they're amazing deal i don't expect these to stay on the cheap for too long okay this issue is a reprint of x-men number one reprint of avengers number one reprint of hulk number three reprint of strange tales number 15 right and if you've been following our comic book videos right strange tales number 15 is one of the comics that i showed you during our first set of videos that i put out where I was showing you my comic book collection, some of my comic book collection, and we did a reading of Strange Tales number 15, right? Because it's the, I believe the third appearance of Doctor Strange is the origin of Doctor Strange, right? And it's Stanley and uh, uh, Steve Ditko, I believe Steve Ditko <laughs> did, the, did the work for it, the art for it, and it's got a reprint of Amazing Fantasy number 15 as well, right? So Strange Tales number 15, I was very happy to find out that this had a reprint of that. And of course, 
x-men number one avengers number one like holy camoles and a canadian variant right for the price we paid for it 1542 us this was a steal this comic um oh yeah by the way it was graded at very good plus which is 4.5 right came out in 1965. Okay, take a look at this awesome right you know when you're closer so you see it you can get these on the cheap not the canadian variant versions the canadian variants go for sweet price right they're very expensive but the people that have worked on this i mean stan lee jack kirby paul reenman um we got what else we got we got dick Ayers. we got steve ditko of course right we have uh uh Ayers, avengers uh, ditko art basically it's a lot of uh, the reprints that Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, Dick Ayers, Steve Ditko did, right? Fantastic. Very happy. Very, very happy to have this in the collection. I didn't have this and I don't have this, but now I do. And a Canadian variant. Awesome. 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 Right? Let's see what else we got. And I picked up a few uh, Marvel Tales. Okay. Like I said, Marvel Tales are going, uh, they're going on a cheap. And the reprints of some key issues and reprints in the same decade right some of the stuff you can get ridiculously low right this is marvel tales number eight okay ended up paying 425 canadian for this 320 us okay and it's a reprint of amazing spider-man number 13 right reprint of strange tales number 106 reprint of journey into mystery number 90 reprint of tales to astonish number 53 and again the people that have worked on this stan lee steve ditko uh you got jack kirby you got dick Ayers, you got larry lieber you got <laughs> you got don heck working on this like seriously awesome 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 like look at this and these are covers of the of what they're reprinting right so four comic books from the silver age of comics right and some of these other ones would be the reprints because marvel comics was timely before right i believe it was timely and then changed to marvel so there are some reprints of golden age comics in these marvel tales as well which is really and you're getting them for anywhere between two to four dollars uh, US just imagine giving this as a gift to a kid right here 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 here's a gift of reprint of which one is this one this one's uh, Marvel Tales number 10 again here I'll show you this one right this is Marvel Tales number 10 okay and it's graded very good plus 4.5 most of these were graded very good plus a very good plus 4.5 or very um fine fine minus so around that range mid-range right and this is a reprint of amazing spider-man number 15 strange tales number 108 journey into mystery number 92 tales to astonish number 55 right fantastic Again, work by Stan Lee, Steve Ditko, Jack Kirby, Dick Ayers, um, Hallie Hartley, Larry Lieber, right? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> like, just imagine how happy. Like, just imagine the hours of pure joy. Forget about a kid. What an adult gets from, for 244 price of and it's a thick book right check it out it's thick right how many pages is this i don't i didn't make track i didn't make note of how many pages these are right and they're printed on newsprint so there there's a lot of pages here right hours of joy for an adult and for a kid a treasure right amazing gifts amazing gifts let me put these guys here 
check out this one okay I gotta find the other one because I ended up grabbing two copies of this one so I want to show you both copies there we go because I love this cover and he had one month he put one one issue up uh, the next month he put the next issue up so I ended up winning both of them all right one is a little bit higher grade uh, where did I put the other one uh, well the, the, we know what the I made a note of these ones this is Marvel Tales number 12 two copies of Marvel Tales number 12 all right awesome 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 this one is graded at very good plus I made notes on the back very good plus 4.5 okay and this one is graded at fine which is 6.0 right let me show you the, <laughs> the fine cover for this one did I make a note of how much I paid for the uh, for the fine copy oh I can't remember but I paid like the very good copy I paid 275 Canadian which came out to 207 US and for the fine copy I paid like 325 right which came out to like 244 US okay take a look at this beautiful beautiful hobgoblin cover right and the cover is by Steve Ditko and John Romita right awesome awesome right and this one again it's uh, amazing artists and creators and writers on this right Stanley Jack Kirby uh, Ernie Hart Dick Ayers you got Steve Ditko and the cover is by Steve Ditko by the way right Steve Ditko created spider-man as well right with Stanley right fantastic fantastic I wish I could read you the title the writing here and show you the cover at the same time and read my notes at the same time <laughs> difficult to do right so what does this say and uh, let me tell you who uh, what the what the issues are that are reprinted in this this is reprint of amazing spider-man number 17 okay reprint of strange tales number um, 110 right uh, with Stan Lee as the script and Larry Lieber as uh, for the artwork um, reprint of tales to astonish number 58 okay and reprint of journey into mystery number 98 and Don Hick is in this and and whatnot right what does the cover say and it's sheer dynamite when Spidey gets a hand from the human torch so the human torch is in here too right the torch versus the lizard and peace plot pot peat the mighty Thor and mighty Thor is journey into mystery right uh, mighty before it became um, so journey into mystery kicked into the mighty Thor right um, Thor versus the Cobra wasp is in here right fantastic fantastic take a look <laughs> nice very happy to have this very happy to have this what else we got what else we got let's move this over let me bring you the right one where is this one where is this one where is this one? Oh, there it is cool next one again marvel tales number 14. okay very good plus fantastic cover very good plus right 4.5 ended up paying 324 for this which is 244 okay or 325 Canadian which is 244 US okay the covers by Steve Ditko Jack Kirby Russ Heath uh, inks by Steve Ditko right uh, Thor is by Chick Stone and Russ Heath is Marvel boy so what they did was they took cut out parts that each artist had done and put them together and created the cover right so basically the strange the Marvel Tales has some of the covers that have compilation sort of a what do you call it when you take cutouts and put them all together and 
um, make a make a sheet of different things all over the place I forget what they're called uh, I should know when I was a kid I would make them right some of the greatest artists creators in comic books you'll find plastered on the covers of Marvel tales all of them together in one shot right <laughs> fantastic right and this is uh, uh, who is that what is this reprint of this is amazing spider-man number 19 reprint of amazing spider-man number 19 reprint of marvel boy number one wow 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 from 1950s from the golden age of comics right reprint of strange tales number 111 and reprint of journey into mystery number 100 right and again you have artists like dick Harris and russ heath and uh, jack kirby and steve Ditko and all that jazz so all of these marvel tales is same compilation of writers uh from the golden age and silver age of comics right from marvel comics the greats the greats right awesome marvel tales number 15 where are you there you are there you are i actually have the original of this okay this is amazing spider-man number 20. so i do have some early issues i've shown you guys this during the one of the first comic book uh me showing you my comic book collection that video that we put out right uh i showed you guys a, a lot of the early issues of the of the amazing spider-man that i have and i have this one right but this is Marvel, or the original of this, which is Amazing Spider-Man number 20. But this is uh, the cover by Steve Ditko, right? And this is Marvel Tales number 15, 1968. Graded a very good plus 4.5. Ended up paying 275 for this. $2.07 US, right? And it's a reprint of Amazing Spider-Man number 20. Uh, astonishing uh number five right oh check this out strange tales number 112 and journey into mystery number 101 and i didn't i i read up on this a little bit right or i read up on all of these a little bit a little bit too much to tell you the truth right but check this one out the one of the stories is the living bomb starring the human torch script by stan lee the plot and Jerry Siegel, right? And Joe Carter, script, right? Art by Dick Harris, reprinted from Strange Tales number 112. Okay, let me read you a little bit of extra that I uh, read up on this, right? And Jerry Siegel is, is gigantic, right? But um, Jerry Siegel first worked for Marvel in 1963 under a pseudo name joe carter so if you have any comic books that are listed as joe carter as the writer is jerry siegel right uh so siegel first worked for marvel in 1963 under the pseudo name george carter and stan lee he co-created co the villain plant man in strange tales number 113. he also scripted the human torch feature in Strange Tales number 112 and 113 in September, October 1963, including the teenage Torch's high school girlfriend, Doris Evans, and under his own name and backup featuring a uh, feature starring the X-Men member Angel, which ran in Marvel Tales and Kazaa. Okay. According to then Marvel editor-in-chief, Stan Lee Spiegel, quote, was down on his luck end quote down on his luck right unbelievable unbelievable right the creator of superman the co-creator of superman was joe schuster was down on his luck right let me like that blows me away right so according to then marvel editor-in-chief stan lee siegel quote was down on his luck end quote and in ill health at the time so he gave him a job at marvel as a proofreader during which time siegel wrote the angel's story now this is hearsay right coming from stanley so anything coming from that era you take with a grain of salt right but we know 
in terms of history that how some of the great creators in comics have been treated by companies, right? By Wall Street, by money, right? A lot of them died broke, right? Having financial difficulty, having ill health, right? Wallywood would be one. Jack Kirby would be another. And Jerry Siegel, right? Unbelievable, right? The creator of Superman, down on his luck in the 1960s when he created Superman in the 1930s. Right. I'm glad to have that. Let me show you more. And these are, I bought a whole bunch of, oh, we got Marvel Tales here again. But let me go in order that I've listed stuff in. Okay. Here's Fantasy Masterpiece number two. Oops, this is number three. Here's number two. Let me show you number two first. Fantasy Masterpieces. Number two, right? 1966, graded at very good plus, 4.5. Beautiful, 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 right? Jack Kirby right? cover. Steve Ditko cover. Don Heck cover. Dick Ayers cover, right? The inks by Dick Ayers. Take a look. Let me bring it close. Okay. Fing Fang Foam. Fing Fang Foam, right there. You see the dragon. Fing Fang Foam. One of Marvel's uh, super villains, right? So this is Strange Tales number 89 reprint. Reprint of Tales of Suspense number 12 and reprint of Journey into Mystery number 57. Fantastic, fantastic. Ended up paying $3.91 Canadian, $2.87 US. Nice. Fantasy Masterpieces. I was happy to get this one as well. Very happy to get this one as well. Fantasy Masterpieces number three. Came out in 1966. Graded a very good plus, right? 4.5. Paid 550 for this. 550 Canadian, 414 US. Cover pencils by Jack Kirby, Gene Cohen, Don Heck, uh, inks by Frank uh, Jewel Koya. Captain America, Gene Cohen, and Don Heck. Check this out. Reprints from the Golden Age of Comics. The original Captain America, right? So, reprinting Captain America number three from 1941. Okay. Script by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. Pencils by Jack Kirby. Inks by Bernie Klein and George Russos, right? Reprint of Journey into Mystery number 82. Gene Cohen, colon, and reprint of Strange Tales number 100. Awesome. 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 Right? Awesome. Uh, Don Heck. Okay. And reprint of Tales of Suspense number 22. Reprint of Strange Tales number 73, art by, I highlighted this, art by Steve Ditko. So let me read the sentence. A scientist, and this is time, time travel stuff, so I was uh, keen on this one, right? I think it's this one down here, one of these guys down here. I think all the stuff, so you see it, right? So the story of this is in uh, Strange Tales number 73, Art by Steve Ditko, a scientist builds a time machine and discovers that time is a loop with all events repeating themselves endlessly for eternity. Oh, what? Awesome sci-fi. Awesome sci-fi. Right? Amazing sci-fi. And again, of course, a uh, reprint of another story from Captain America, number, th uh, number three, Captain America Comics, number three from 1941. Right, phenomenal. Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. This was a good price. We got it at. 
at 550 Canadian, 414 US. Fantastic price. Oh, let me show you these ones. Prince Namor, the Submariner. Submariner. I shouldn't say Mariner. Submariner. Number six. Okay. This is the second appearance of Target Shark. Cool. Ended up paying five fifty for this, four fourteen, five fifty Canadian, four fourteen US. Graded at very good plus four point four point five. Okay. Uh, written by Roy Thomas, cover and art by John Boshima and Dan Atkins. Cool. And the second appearance of Tiger Shark, right? Not a bad price. You can get the uh, Submariner Prince Namor for fairly cheap price it was a lot cheaper like five years ago it's kicking up in price it's kicking up in price check this out i like getting this this was a great this was a really good deal the only reason i was able to get it so cheap because it's got tape here this is star spangled war stories number 53 from 1957 is the second appearance of sergeant rock or third appearance of sergeant rock prototype this was graded at good minus which is 1.8 low grade ended up paying 550 canadian for it 715 us oh that can't be true 550 canadian um okay i either paid 550 canadian or 715 us I'm no, i don't know what the conversion is I had a typo here, right? Cover art by Jerry uh, Granda Grandati. Okay. Script by uh, Robert Kanger. Art by Jerry Gangetti. Battle anchor. Script by Dave Wood. Art, art by Joe Kubert. Right? Joe Kubert. And then you have uh, Kubert has uh, the Kubert School of Comic Book. Uh, art like training right and he's got two sons working in this industry right uh, Andy and Adam Kubert are working in this industry okay another one another story in here uh, script is Bob Hain art by Ross Heath okay another one uh, Ross Heath in inks by uh, Espanzito right Charles J Jerry Grandenti. I'm so bad with names. He co created uh, The Spirit, I believe. Phenomenal artwork. Beautiful artwork. Take a look at this. Dog fight in the air, right? And the reason this is graded at good mind is it's got the tape here. Nice. This is early silver age, it's got the comic code authority approved thing there, right? Very cool. Oh, where's the other one? Another war comic. Let me find you the other war comic. Another war comic. Where are you? There you are. This is a beautiful cover. I like this. Check this out. Battle action number 16 from 1957 graded at good check this out from 1957 again early uh, silver age take a look at the cover ended up paying 325 for this Canadian 244 US first issue of the series so started off with number 16 the series is continuing on from uh, what was it foreign in intrigues okay cover is by charles nicholas uh, and pat uh, mussolini there's a d-day story the stories are listed here right what they are right the d-day story this one this one this one and this one right so d-day story is joe gill uh, art by maurice whitman right uh, joe gill again uh, Bill 
Mulro, Charles Nicholas, Sal Strappi, some of the people that have worked on this, Rocco uh, Mastra Serio, right? We've had some comics by him, Rocco, we've seen before. And these you can get on the cheap. These are the Charlton War comics. I'm not sure why the Charlton War comics are going uh, for so cheap. But happy to have it. A good, graded good 2.0. Back to Marvel Tales. Let me show you a handful of additional Marvel Tales we picked up. Marvel Tales number 16, 1968, graded at fine. 6.0, ended up paying 325 for this. Okay. Cover, Steve Ditko. Okay. Reprints, Amazing Spider-Man number 21. Astonishing... Um, Astonishing uh, number 15 by Bill Everett, right? Awesome. Oh, sorry, uh, Astonishing number 5 by Bill Everett, a Golden Age comic reprint, right? Uh, Strange Tales number 113 and Journey into Mystery number 102. Okay. And Bill Everett is huge. Uh, he co created or created Namor the Submariner. I would say co create. Everything's co create, really, right? And co creating. Daredevil. Awesome. Got this as a good price too. All of all of these Marvel tales we got at a really good price. I'm glad to have these in my collection. I have some of these before, but I don't have a complete set. Marvel Tales number 17. Graded at fine. 6.0. Ended up paying 325 for this. Canadian 244 US. Cover again by Steve Ditko. Reprints Amazing Spider-Man number 22, Strange Tales number 114. All right, take a look at that cover. Nice. Strange Tales number 114, Journey into Mystery number 104. All right. And these are the Spider-Man covers that they're putting on there. I'm assuming it's the cover of uh, um, Amazing Spider-Man number 22. I don't know. I don't think I have this one in my collection, the original anyway. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, this is. Where is the other one? There we go. I got one more Marvel Tales, but it's out of order, so I'm gonna go to the other reprint stuff that we ended up buying. Marvel Superheroes number twenty-two. Check this out. Awesome. Check out the blob. <laughs> nice. Cover pencils by Jack Kirby, inks by John Verputen, right? Stan Lee, Joe Orlando, Vince Coletta. Reprints. Uh, there's one page reprints from uh, Daredevil number two and number one. Uh, cover prints, reprints. So they're reprinting covers from Daredevil number one and number two. Uh, pencils by Jack Kirby, inks by Bill Everett. Also, let me flip this. There's the Daredevil stuff, right? Reprints the cover for X Men number one, right? And X Men number two, and X Men number three, right? And reprint of X Men number three, right? So there's a lot of reprints here, stories taken mishmash from all over the place put into this thing. What do we pay for this? We paid two. 25 Canadian dollar 69 US for some 1969 comic graded at fine 6.0 also that's a beautiful cover by the way let me move my finger so you see it nice old school X-Men look at the beast look at his toes Cyclops Angel, Angel Marvel Girl Iceman nice bonus the man without fear the man without peer the man they call daredevil right and we've done a reading of daredevil number one right we did a framing of daredevil number one and we did a full-on reading of the copy of daredevil number one that i have 
right in the comic book readings that we did and Stan Lee Steve did go and it was a it was fantastic really right I hope it was Steve Ditko. I always get my creators all mixed up, right? Where is the other one? Where is the other one? Let me show you this other one. More Daredevil. Marvel Superheroes. Double feature. Marvel Superheroes number 29. This is graded very good fine, so 5.0 from 1971. And ended up paying 225 for this dollar sixty-nine. Cover is by Mary Severn, inks by John John Romito. Okay. Stan Lee, you got here. Wally Wood, you got here. I love Wally Wood, man. Wally Wood and Bob Powell. Inks by Wally Wood. Reprints Daredevil number one. Amazing Adventures number five, right? Tales of Suspense number 75, Tales of Suspense number 76, Journey into Mystery number 58. So it could be parts here, a little bit, a little short story here, right? And artists for this, the writers for this, you got a whole bunch of stuff. You got Jack Kirby, Stan Lee. Who else we got here? Don Heck. I <laughs> got a lot of people in this, right? 225 Canadian dollar 69 US. You want to read comic books? Here you go. On the cheap cheap, here you go. You could buy like three of these for the same price of a brand new comic. And it's mid grade, right? Pretty good copy, nice and thick. Give this as a present to a kid that loves comic books. I actually have a student that uh, uh, every time I go see them to do uh, to do some math, I take them. Um, I'm buying a lot of the true believers and DC's one dollar comic books and anything I can get for one dollar. So I've been buying one for myself and one for my student. I've been reading those a lot, and every time I go see this one student, he's he does his own comic books and stuff. I take him a a comic book, right? And he tells me stories and we do mathematics and just make it pleasant, right? Once you create a pleasant atmosphere, it's easier to learn, right? Glad to have this one in my collection. There's a couple of these, this one and the next one. The next one, very, very happy to have that one, right? This one is Avengers number 79, okay? The British variant, the, the British variant is a price tag, right? So it's the British variant. I usually don't collect British variants, the Canadian variants I collect, but the British variants are start to be sought after as well. This came out in 1970. It's graded at 5 plus 6.5, right? That's the British price variant. Take a look at the cover. The covers are beautiful for these, by the way. Okay. I paid $750 for this, $564 US. 750 Canadian, 564 US. Script by Roy Thomas. Pencils by John Bushima. Inks by Tom Palmer. Cover by John Bushima. And John Bushima is amazing. If you want to see some of the best work John, John Bushima has done, check out Savage Sword of Conan. You can see his beautiful, beautiful pencils. It's all black and white, but you can see his beautiful artwork. Uh, John Bushima's in uh, Savage Sword of Conan. And the covers of the Avengers. The covers of the Avengers are amazing, by the way. Really nice. Here, I'll bring it closer so you see. Right? So, very cool. Very cool. Okay, glad to have this. Check this one out. This one was one of the higher prices of, on the higher end, right? And the top four, I think the price list um, uh, thing, order form was 
dollar fifty more than this or a dollar more than this. This is Avengers number ninety two. Okay. Nice. Take a look at this cover. Take a look at this. Ended up paying ten fifty Canadian for this, seven ninety US, and it's a Neil Adams cover, right? Cree scrawl war number four part four okay and script by roy thomas pencils by sal boshima inks by george rosso cover by neil adams and tom palmer this is one of i believe four uh, what does it say perhaps the most well known of the first of the five covers that adams drew for the avengers titles the letters page contains a letter from comic book writer David Michelini. Very cool. Very cool. This is a beautiful cover. I have to go out for you to see the you know, the full glory of it, right? Take a look at this. I love this cover. Here, I'll bring it up close so you see. It'll scan up or scan down. Look at Thor this captain america iron man is captain america just it, neil adams work during that period phenomenal beautiful right very happy to have this in my collection ye have disgraced the name of the avengers go then and be avengers no more for all things must end thor says nice nice oh where did these guys go these were out of order so i gotta find these ones now there's two we haven't looked at so let me find these ones let me find these ones let me find these ones oh there we go we got we got marvel tales again right i flipped the page without looking at it marvel tales this is a beautiful cover as well and i have the original of this i believe right this is great at a fine 6.0 cover is by steve ditko and it's the cover of uh, amazing spider-man number 23 and i'm pretty sure i have this in my collection right so script by stanley art by steve ditko right reprints amazing spider-man number 23 journey into mystery number 105 and strange tales number 115. uh graded a fine 6.0 and we ended up paying 325 244 325 Canadian 244 US for this awesome awesome and check out this one I don't have this in my collection very happy to get this in my collection and we got it at a great price okay the mighty Thor annual number two check this out check this out check this out this is graded very good 4.0 ended up paying 550 canadian for this 414 us okay stanley jack kirby vince coletta two thor reprints there's an original story here okay loki original story destroy appears here and it does two reprints uh, one of them from journey into mystery number 96 and the other one is uh, a journey into mystery number 103 beautiful very happy to have this i like these annuals and these reprint stuff right sometimes i give these away as gifts especially if i if i have multiple copies of certain things like the marvel tales with the green goblin I know I have to I might give one away as a present like seriously I won't give it uh, yet to a, the student of mine beautiful 
I gave him a, a copy of a first printing uh, when I first started working with him. I gave him a copy of a first printing of uh, the first appearance of Bishop. <laughs> I think it was the first printing of the first appearance of Bishop, or it might have been. I think I gave him no. I gave him a copy of uh, X Men number four, the first appearance of Omega Red, and I had it in the bag and board. I gave it to him, and then. Uh, he brought it back the next time I saw him he was giving it back to me I said no no no, that's a gift for you and he goes oh really thanks but it wasn't in his comic book and bag and board he said oh I lost the comic bag and board so uh, I'll hold off on giving him any original stuff until he appreciates you should keep the comics in good shape if they're first appearing well anything really even like I, I keep almost everything in bag and board there's reading copies I have that you've seen of stacks of comics that I have um, which I'm okay with I do have I do keep stacks of comics that I keep that aren't in bag and board and boxes just in case there's people around if they bring their kids or whatnot they say oh do you have any comic books that, you know my kid can read or I can read and stuff I just take them to the stack and say flip through this and read whatever you want right but this is a beautiful cover beautiful cover right. Jack Kirby look at this let me show it to you again look at that what a beautiful cover right seriously nice look at that dynamic just the motion in it right the motion of jack kirby's art is absolutely amazing beautiful just a dimensional feels like 3d without the gimmick 3d you lose yourself in the art fun and that's a two and a half month two months three month comic book haul that I thought uh, uh, you know I put aside I thought we'd do and I thought you'd appreciate it uh, there's some amazing buys here some stuff that I really love and will definitely most likely let's say most likely there's a lot we need to do right we'll flip through this we'll look at the prices that you could have got some of the comics for in anywhere between 1966 and 1970 from uh, mail order catalog right <laughs> I hope you enjoy it and uh, thanks for sticking around um, I'll see you guys in the next video uh, may it be comic book haul may it be food related may it be something else okay bye for now